Okay, let's have a look at how we can represent gravitational forces diagrammatically. To do that, we're going to take, uh, we're going to revise what we know about how gravitational forces act. So gravitational forces, first of all, act on objects even when they don't touch each other. So I have two objects here. There is a gravitational attraction between the two of them. It's very weak, but still a gravitational attraction between them. Second of all, gravity, or the gravitational attraction between two objects, can act in a vacuum. Now from these two observations, we can summarise and say that gravitational forces, they have an action at a, di at a distance. Similarly, magnetic forces can do this, as can electro electrostatic forces. So we're going to borrow from the um, magnetic fields concept to try and come up with a diagram that represents gravitational fields. So if we do a little thought experiment, we've got our north and south pole on our bar magnet. We bring uh, something like an iron nail next to the north pole here. And what we find is we rotate this object around particularly at this end, we find that there's a force of attraction at this end. Similarly, if we took our nail to the south end, we find exactly the same thing. So if we were looking end on on this magnet, we could actually represent this force of attraction with a series of what we call field lines. So those field lines, first of all, show us direction. So they're going from the object to the magnet. So they're being attracted by the magnet. Second of all, we can show the strength of those field lines by showing the number of lines that we have or the density of lines that we have. So the more dense or the more lines that we have, the stronger the magnetic field. And lastly, we can also show at a distance out from the object that's attracting another object, the density as well. So the closer in to the object that's attracting our, or sorry, the magnet that's attracting our nail, the more dense that field is. And as we travel out further, the field becomes weaker and weaker. And that's what we observe with our magnetic fields. We hold our, our iron nail very close and it has a very strong pull. The further we move this object out, the less pull that it has. So we can think of, because our gravity also acts at a distance, we can model our force of attraction with our gravity as well. So if we've got two objects, let's say we've got planet Earth and we've got the Moon, if we look at and compare the strength of those fields and represent them diagrammatically, we can represent the force of gravity on Earth as much stronger by first of all having more lines in there, and we see the difference between the Earth and the, sorry, the Earth and the Moon. So more, more field lines means a stronger field. Second of all, as we move out our distance from our object, we find that our field strength decreases as well. And that's what we observe with gravitational fields. Close to Earth, we've got a strong gravitational field. As we move out further and further into space, there's less attraction to the Earth. So objects that are out at a certain distance don't fall to Earth readily.